I think some of the information we've had about uh, outcomes in people with diabetes may reflect people mainly with type 2 diabetes. I think the other thing that's worth remembering is that much of the bad outcomes that have happened for people with diabetes are in people who have lots of other comorbidities. So young people who are fit, who don't have complications from diabetes, I think I would not consider them to be at particularly high risk for contracting uh, COVID-19 or from developing complications uh, as a result of infection. However, this infection does seem to be very unpredictable. And while uh, bad outcomes and deaths in people who are old and frail with other diseases does seem to be quite common, we do see, unfortunately, young people who are becoming affected quite severely. So given that unpredictability, I would not consider this young healthy man uh, with well-controlled type 1 diabetes to be particularly vulnerable. But nonetheless, this is not a time for any of us to be taking chances. And so we should look after ourselves and look after each other by keeping away from crowds, following uh, the distancing recommendations and washing our hands carefully with soap and water after we have been outside uh, or in contact with other people. Some of you are expressing concerns about having gone to the pharmacy to fill your insulin prescription and only been given 30 days supply. As someone that also relies on insulin, I know that can be scary, but it doesn't mean that there's a problem. Diabetes Canada is in regular contact with all of the insulin manufacturers and with Health Canada, and we're assured that there is no shortage of insulin in Canada. But because of the COVID-19 emergency, all pharmacists have been asked only to dispense 30 days of prescriptions at a time. So it's normal that you're only being given 30 days supply. Give yourself about a week to get um, your prescription filled to make sure there's not any problems and look into whether your pharmacy has options for delivery so that you can avoid going into the pharmacy any more than absolutely necessary. Be well. People with type 2 diabetes are at a higher risk of infection with COVID-19 and can get a more severe infection than the general population. And so extra precaution must be taken by these people uh, with type 2 diabetes. Here's a long answer. Um, we know that uh, type 2 diabetes in itself and many of the other uh, medical conditions that go along with type 2 diabetes, which can include uh, older age, um, being overweight or obesity, uh, smoking, uh, maybe heart disease or kidney disease, uh, or even high blood pressure are more uh, 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 seen in people with type 2 diabetes and are uh, in itself, in themselves, a risk factor for a severity of uh, COVID-19 infection as well. Uh, why is it uh, so? Uh, we don't know exactly because the science uh, for COVID-19 infection is evolving. What we do uh, know or think uh, we know is that uh, immune function is less, uh, it's not as robust in people with type 2 diabetes uh, to fight the infection and hence uh, people with type 2 diabetes may have a higher risk of uh, infection as well as severe infection. So what can we do? Uh, first of all, prevention is better than cure and that's true for uh, uh, type 2 diabetes and COVID-19 uh, as well. So people who have diabetes uh, type 2 uh, should take extra precaution. Uh, so maintain the physical or social distancing of six feet uh, as is recommended by public health agencies. And also follow uh, uh, other uh, uh, recommendations which include hand hygiene uh, as well as uh, not touching surfaces, wearing gloves, and may even consider wearing non-surgical cloth masks uh, when uh, going out. Uh, for example, uh, for grocery shopping. If you can avoid it, uh, maybe consider online shopping or somebody uh, uh, who has less of a risk uh, 
uh, some family member who has less of a risk of uh, higher, uh, higher severity COVID infection could do the grocery shopping uh, for uh, the family as well. Now, if somebody is uh, uh, getting some symptoms, uh, so if somebody has symptoms, uh, let's say of cough or sneezing or some fever, uh, there should be a low threshold uh, to get this tested. So talk to your family physician uh, or healthcare provider, uh, as well as public health agencies uh, to try and get uh, the COVID-19 testing done. Um, most of the provinces uh, for high-risk people, uh, they would fall under the high-risk category and hence uh, get the testing. Uh, while you're waiting for the COVID-19 uh, uh, results to be back, uh, isolation, isolation uh, from other uh, family members is important, but keep communicating uh, through phone or video chats, etc. Now, the severity of infection we talked about can be uh, higher in people with type 2 diabetes. So what could that look like? Uh, it could look like uh, shortness of breath. It could uh, take high-grade fever or uh, some people can have chest pain, etc. as well. Uh, so that would mean uh, maybe this, is a, this could be a severe COVID-19 infection. Uh, severity in general, in the general population, we think is about 10 to 15% of people who are infected with COVID-19 have severe infection like pneumonia or needing hospitalization. But this percentage may be higher in people with type 2 diabetes. So for people with type 2 diabetes, if they're developing any of this, uh, these symptoms, uh, so short of the breath uh, or high grade fever, et cetera, uh, uh, they should be uh, transferred to the emergency room or an ambulance uh, should be called immediately and, and seek immediate uh, medical attention. Our community laboratories remain open for people to get blood tests done. Here are a few tips in order to protect yourself uh, when going to these facilities. First of all, make an appointment so that you are able to get in and out and not have to wait around a waiting room. The second thing you can do is, as been now recommended, you can protect yourself by wearing some sort of face covering. The other thing that you can do, of course, is wash your hands uh, before going into the lab, uh, wash your hands after leaving the lab and ensuring that you're not touching your face. If you are going to wear the face covering, which I would recommend as well, then ensure that you handle the mask properly when removing it so that you're not touching the outside of the mask and then touching your face, which would then defeat the whole purpose. But if you do need lab tests done, still go ahead and do them. Go ahead and make an appointment so that you can go in and out protect yourself with face covering, as well as lots of hand washing. And of course, physical distancing remains a necessary component. You cannot physical distance from the person who's drawing your blood, but from everyone else involved, that will happen. And please be assured that the facilities themselves have also taken multiple precautions to protect you, as well as to protect themselves. Uh, type one diabetes, is one cause of kidney disease. And I'm assuming that in this person's question that they have developed kidney disease because of diabetes and that that's why they have had a kidney transplant. So people who have had kidney transplants have to take anti-rejection drugs to prevent their body from rejecting the transplanted organ. Now the drugs that we use to prevent rejection also will reduce our body's ability to fight certain kinds of infection. While dirt and grime and common bacteria, our bodies can handle those quite easily, even if we're taking anti-rejection drugs, our ability to deal with more unusual uh, infections or fungi or viruses, that actually is impaired by the anti-rejection drugs that people take for transplant. So these people should be considered to be high risk and vulnerable and they should be taking extra precautions to avoid exposure to people who might be infected with COVID-19. Follow the advice that your team has given you previously about the need for care around uh, infections when you're taking anti-rejection drugs and again perhaps taking extra care at this point in time when we've got this new virus which is kind of unpredictable and can cause quite severe outcomes uh, for some people.
So first of all, congratulations on becoming a respiratory therapist. Uh, my brother is one as well, and I know that over the course of your career, you will undoubtedly help and save many people. So thank you very much for that. To answer your question, the fact that you have type 1 diabetes does not put you at higher risk of getting COVID-19 infection. The data that we have to date suggests that those with diabetes seem to get COVID-19 infection at the same rate as everyone else. However, the severity of disease may in fact be higher in those living with diabetes. There is no differentiation though at this point in the data between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. However, what we know is that those with multiple comorbidities do worse, and that typically is more common in older people living with type 2 diabetes. So are you at higher risk of getting COVID-19 infection? You are solely by virtue of your occupation and the environment in which you work, but not because of your diabetes. So what you can do is to protect yourself as all of your other colleagues are doing, which is being very diligent with personal protective equipment and of course taking precautions as are being taken by the institution and the rest of your colleagues. But I do want to take this opportunity to thank you for the hard work that you're doing. When it comes to COVID-19, there are a lot of people trying to sell you a lot of nonsense online. Some of those people are really well-intentioned and just ignorant. Others of those people are trying to take advantage of the fact that people are scared. If there were a supplement that had been shown to be effective at preventing COVID-19, we'd all have the medical evidence in our hands telling us why and how much to take. Without that evidence, what you're doing is wasting your money and taking chances that aren't necessary. So again, bottom line for COVID-19, if you want to try to reduce your risk, get good night's sleeps, Eat as healthy a diet as you can, uh, cook as often as you can, get as much exercise as you can, and then wash your hands, uh, socially distance yourself, uh, stay at home, all the things you keep hearing about, which may not be as exciting and hopeful as a miracle cure, but unfortunately, at this point, there are no miracle cures.